Hello, everybody, and welcome. I so appreciate everybody being here with us. I am Peter Goldstein, founder of We Did It That Health and Chief Synergy Officer. And I have chosen Chief Synergy Officer because there's just so many amazing people, amazing organizations in this plan-based movement. And my mission, my, my role, I see it as synergizing, bringing everybody together so that together we can we can help change the world. And of course, we want to grow the plant-based movement by inspiring our friends and loved ones to be curious about a plant-based lifestyle. And that's what we feel is missing in this world. If we all can replace our frustration when we try to inspire somebody we care about, replace that frustration with the joy of watching them thrive, I think that everybody will have a much better life and certainly will grow the numbers. So with that, uh, we have a very special uh, live event here today uh, with uh, Dr. Angela Crawford, who wrote our ebook that you probably have all seen. And if you haven't seen the ebook yet, and if you haven't filled out the uh, one question survey, please go to we did it health, answer the simple one question, multiple choice, survey that asked the question, how have you benefited from a plant-based lifestyle? And of course, our mission with that survey is to show the world that this isn't just some wacko doctor in a cave somewhere, to show the world that there's millions of people benefiting with better health, benefiting animal justice, because certainly it's amazing. It's horrific, the suffering that animals uh, go through and, and have to endure and then be killed to to feed people, and certainly, amazingly enough, the uh, the key to the solution to climate change is about being plant based. So, with that, I would like to introduce and bring on Dr. Angela Crawford, who, like I say, uh, wrote our ebook Seven Best Habits to Inspire Our Loved Ones to Be Plant Based, and then we'll bring on our very special guest, Dr. Akil Tehar. Uh, who has a phenomenal story and has been doing an amazing job inspiring others to be plant-based. So with that, uh, I bring on Angela Crawford. Welcome, Angela. Thank you for being with us on this third of a series of four amazing uh, live events to, to help us all focus on better ways to inspire people we care about to plant-based lifestyle. Hello, Angela. Hello. Um, I'll just do a brief introduction. Um, many of you um, may have met me already, but I'm a psychologist um, have, who has been a practicing psychotherapist for over two decades. Um, and my initial interest was actually in health psychology and really how do we use psychology to help us have a healthier lifestyle and to overcome medical issues. And over the course of being a psychotherapist, I've worked with, you know, stress and trauma and, and anxiety and depression and all those kinds of things. Um, but when I became vegetarian and then later vegan, that really transformed how I, you know, want to contribute in the field of psychology. Because my journey of going plant-based and fully vegan eventually has been so transformative that I want to inspire others. And that kind of led me from being someone who, who tends to be introverted and kind of shy to someone that is willing to speak up, even, you know, though it's not always easy. And, you know, along the way, I became really interested in how being plant-based or vegan has transformed people's lives. And so right now I'm doing some research on that topic for a book. And I'm just really thrilled to be part of this community because the message is so aligned with what I what I'm interested in. So look forward to our discussion today. Well, thank you, Angela. And and with that, I'll, I'll uh, bring Dr. Tehar on and uh, he will share with us uh, some of his story and, and also uh, share with us uh, how he's been inspiring his friends and, and patients uh, along the way here. So welcome, Dr. Tehar. Well, thank you for having me, Peter. Thank you for having me, Peter. Uh, my name is Akil Teher. I'm a practicing physician in Atlanta, but I'm a resurgent physician 
meaning that I'm more inclined to treat the cause of chronic diseases rather than the consequence after it has happened. I'm also a heart disease survivor, having had bypass, open heart bypass surgery. And I'm also, uh, at 74, I'm a septuagenarian endurance athlete, and I'm a very strong proponent of a whole food plant-based vegan diet. That's in brief my introduction. Well, thank you, thank you. and welcome. And, Do you uh, want to continue the story? I thought Angela yes. would talk about the... I'm sorry, do you want me to continue or yes. was Angela going please, to talk about the continue YouTube? and uh, oh. yes. okay. okay, so here here is my story. It, it fits with the fact of what Angela is going to speak about regarding uh, show don't just tell and sharing compelling documentaries. Now in keeping with the about themes. I want to share with you a story that just recently happened. I celebrated my 74th birthday last week in March with a bunch of medical school friends, all in our 70s in Sedona, Arizona. Now, because my big day was going to come very soon, they casually asked me, what would I like? I thought for a minute and I said, how about you guys joining me for a couple of vegan meals in this town at the vegan restaurants? Boy, oh boy, they were reluctant at first. So I had to bribe them. I said, look, if you don't like the food, I will pick up the tab. So here we are sitting in a beautiful restaurant, outdoors, great ambience. And suddenly I get this email or a text from Peter out of nowhere. And I, and I look at the text and Peter tells me, if you are in Sedona, you have to visit the chocolate tree. And I wrote to Peter, I am at the chocolate tree. And having this meal around here, but a little apprehensive of what my friends would feel after the meal. Trust me, folks, this meal was so good that, they, that there was not a morsel left on the plate. And everyone said that, oh, my God, we did not know that vegan meals can taste so good. Can you put on the first two slides, please, for a while, just to show the picture of the restaurant as well as the my group, the old foggies. Yes. That, yeah. Sally, please share the slides. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm I'm sorry about the technical challenges here um that's okay yeah we'll we'll find those <laughs> and then my and and then they i thought and i said my second request would be to join me for a five to six mile hike now there were seven of them who agreed and they said look if you can't make it for half a mile or one mile we'll turn back i said fair enough not a problem at all so we go on the six mile hike and I tell you folks, it was so beautiful with little streams and you know, those logs of wood that we had to balance. And I was so, so happy that all seven of us finished our six miles uh, hike and then went to the second restaurant, the local juicery that was also a vegan restaurant. So in a very small way, my wife and I, that day, played a part in inspiring others 
Now, what they take back home, I don't know, but we have planted the seed of a whole food plant base. Now, having said that, let me tell you things are not always this good. My story, up to the age of 61, I was a creator of my own unhealthy lifestyle. I spent the better part of my life enjoying rich, unhealthy food without worrying about the consequences of unhealthy consequences like heart disease. Like many, I believe heart disease will not happen to me. So like a moth to a flame, I was drawn to meat, eggs, dairy, processed foods, sugar, and like a food addict, I needed these to get my daily high. You know, folks, they called me a seafood eater, an S-E-E. -E. And you know, the thing is that I ate everything at sight, be it unhealthy Indian food, unhealthy Italian food, Japanese food, Mexican food, you name it and I've eaten it. I was also a couch potato. I did not know the meaning of exercise. The only possible exercise I did was with my hand muscles taking the remote and changing the channels while lying on the couch. <laughs> so, with having said this, on top of it, I had a type A personality. I needed everything under control. I was com competitive to an extent which is not healthy. And it was either my way or the highway. All this led into a very stressful situation. And I could not handle stress. You see, stress everybody has. Right now, the presidents and prime ministers and uh, world leaders have a lot of stress. And they can handle it or they're pretending. I don't know, but they are doing it. I could not. It led into a chronic stress of inflammation. And so I was not surprised when heart disease came knocking at my door at the age of 56. And I had triple vessel blockages. Two of my arteries were 98 to 99% blocked. And my plaques were so thick they had to use a diamond tip drill to shave off the plaques. And in the process, I had a cardiac arrest. <clears throat> my heart stopped. They had to shock me, to revive me, to get my heart beating again. <clears throat> they stopped the procedure. They kept me all night in the hospital, continued the procedure the next day. But to my shock, I had these huge paddle burns on my chest. Now, <clears throat> and so I decided that if I was going to continue this kind of a lifestyle, uh, what was it? So in spite of having this coronary artery disease and medical problems, my type A personality prevailed. And I put on a brave face laughing at my medical problems continuing my poor lifestyle and my poor dietary habits. While inside me, there were tormenting thoughts running riots in my mind. I was a doctor. I was supposed to help patients, to treat patients, not become one. So slowly, I started withdrawing from life. And the next five years were the most horrendous five years that I ever faced in my life. I was miserable. I was depressed. I used to sit on a chair looking vacantly at nothingness for hours at end. I would have crying bouts. I would also get into a rage. And I used anger as a cover up for the deep despair I felt. Now, all these negative thoughts 
and it, it is, you know, deep energies, dark energies manifested into physical symptoms. So I started having pneumonias, bronchitis, sinus infections visit me every year. And then because of my long standing, uh, the diet, the American diet, with hardly any fiber, I was under constant chronic constipation, which led to the infamous diverticulitis, which perforated twice. And the second time when I was in the hospital, I kid you not, there were surgeons waiting out in the wings, waiting to open me up and take off my disease colon out. I talked to my gastroenterologist and all that, and thank God I refused. And so, again, there was this enlarged prostate where I had to have, with bleeding and acute retention of urine, they put me in a hospital. For 24 hours, they put huge catheters trying to take out those immensely big clots. And I'm not lying. It was like somebody piercing an iron rod in your genitals for 24 hours. I had hit rock bottom. And at one stage, I thought of giving up everything and ending my life. So it was no surprise again that my stents failed. I got re stenosis and I had to have an open heart bypass surgery. Now things change. <laughs> this is an inflection point. The reflection point, my transformation. I don't know what it is, but I suddenly felt that two choices. First, to lead my sedentary, mediocre lifestyle and to you know, like every of my heart patients after surgery did, or to transform my life incorporating all this healthy diet, meditation, exercise, yoga, sky breathing. I could have sat on the rocking chair, retired, and lived vicariously through my grandchildren uh, and grandchild, but I chose to live life to the fullest. That's People, I want you to do that. I chose life to live life to the fullest because I wanted to make this come back into an opportunity. So I started eating right. No, I was not plant-based, but I started eating better. And as they were taking me into the surgery room, I looked at the nurses and promised them that I would do a half marathon in eight months time after my surgery, if all went well, some of them smiled, some of them humored me. Some, but someone, some people thought that I, it was a anesthesia infused talking, but I don't blame them. So when I, well, I'd made up my mind. So as soon as my surgery was over, my recovery was remarkable. I was on the treadmill on the third day. And even with excruciating chest pain, with the dreaded coughing, people with surgery will tell you, I did not take a single pain medication. I know it may sound a little odd, but to me at that time, pain of that nature was a pleasure compared to the physical and mental agony that I'd gone in the last and undergone in the last five years. So I started, I had to keep up the promise. So I started, I said, man, I've got to do half a marathon. Now this sedentary slob who has not even done one kilometer is now shuffling on the ground, trying to walk and then slowly take up jogging, then take up running. And when I started enjoying running, the words of, I think it was 
Neil Carroll, yes, the middle distance uh, runner, Irish runner, who said that running is a classical road to self-consciousness, to self-awareness, and to self-reliance. And to me, running became a meditation in motion. I love the birds chirping. I love the waterfalls, even the smell of the soil. Even the squirrels smudging for their food was pleasant noises to my ears. So the time came, and eight months later, my wife and I went over to Nashville to run my first half marathon. There was a dichotomy of fear and excitement. But the day came when I ran my half marathon in three and a half grueling hours. But my damaged heart had not failed me. It figuratively and physically carried me to the finish line. Now, I was really feeling good, but I still had those problems of diverticulitis coming up. Not that often, but did come. Sinuses, they were still bothering me. And I used to enjoy these long runs, and then I would come and have a big piece of chicken or fish, and then I would lie in bed for three or four days. Absolutely lethargic, no energy. And I turned around and said, I'm doing everything, meditation, yoga, I'm trying to eat better. What is it? Am I overdoing it? Then one of my friends, a doctor friend, gave me the book of Dean Ornish. His first book of how to uh, not only uh, prevent, but reverse heart disease. I read that. And then I started deep diving into others. I met Dean Ornish in person. Then I met uh, Michael Greger. I mean, I'm sorry. I read Michael Greger's How, to, uh, How Not to Die. Then T. Collins, who wrote the testimonial for my book, Open Heart. And so did Neil Bernard. I met him. And then he wrote a testimonial to Kim Williams. What a man. He said that uh, 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 death is inevitable, but it should not be your fault. So all these people I read. And then I said, wait a minute. All these people have one thing in common, that it is the whole food plant-based vegan diet is the only diet that can not only prevent but reverse chronic diseases. So I started from a flexitarian. I'd already cut back on meat, eggs, and dairy. Now I gave up meat but continued eating fish. Then I gave up dairy. Then I gave up eggs. Then finally, I gave up fish, but I took a whole circle. I became a vegan, but I became a junk food vegan. Because I had a lot of fried foods and sugar and all these processed foods. And then finally, I turned into what I call a good vegan. And to tell you, I was worried at one time because I was an athlete and I wondered whether as every other person, I wondered about protein. And then when I read all these things, that plant protein is immensely good. To give you an example, when I used to run, when I was a non-vegetarian, like I told you, I would be in bed for three or four days. So this is a true story that happened to me. I did a 100-mile hundred mile bike ride in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And for some reason, it was 31 degrees. There was crosswinds, gale force winds. And it took us nine and a half hours to complete the 100-mile bike ride. This thing, I think it was in 2016. <clears throat> and once we finished the thing, we had a huge vegan meal. I had become a vegan by then, a good vegan. And so I felt really good. So we said, let's go back to my small town, Gadsden in Alabama. As we were driving, I get a call from my office manager that the doctor that was supposed to work the next day is reported sick. And without batting an eyelid, I said, no problems. I'll come and work. So here we are, nine and a half hours of bike rides, six miles going around to my small town, getting up next morning and doing a 10-hour shift like it was just any other 
day. Such is the power of a whole food plant-based vegan diet. And in conclusion, because I am a septuagenarian athlete, I want to tell people this, that make no mistake that age is not a limiting factor for anybody to change their lifestyle. I did it at 61. If I can do it, so can you. Thank you so much. What a beautiful story. So, so amazing. So inspiring. I, I actually, I was tearing up listening to you. It's, it's just congratulations and what a beautiful job. Um, I, I'm, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. I, you've, you've gone, you've gone through all, all the phases. You have hit amazing bottom. You, you, you hit bottom and then kept finding a deeper bottom and, and what an amazing bounce back and what a great story. I, I look forward to you inspiring so many people to change their lifestyle. That's, that's, thank you so very much for sharing it. Thank you so much, Peter. It means a lot to me. You know, as far as people can get this health message out, I am so grateful, you know. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. And, and, um, with that, I, I'd like for Angela to say a few things here, and, and we'd love to hear more about your stories of how you're inspiring other people with your with your story. So thank you. And Angela, please go ahead. Okay. Well, that was, that was an amazing story. And um, when we were thinking about who would be a good role model for what we were sharing today, you definitely came to mind, Dr. Taylor, because... Your story is amazing. I, I did read your book, Open Heart, or op what was it called? Open My Heart, or yeah, it was so good. Yeah. Thank so, you so much, Angela. Thank so, you. yes, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so that's a perfect example of what today's all about. Today, we are covering practices four and five from the ebook, which are show, don't just tell and share compelling documentaries. And they both really have to do with us being a role model for a plant-powered lifestyle as a way to advocate and inspire others. So often, you know, our actions and our way of being speak louder than words. You know, often if we say things, but we're not showing up in a way that really embodies what we're saying, our words don't have as much meaning. So just really holding today for how do we show up in ways that inspire others and so I do want to offer a few tips for that, and then we'll um, go back to Dr. Tayer for, you know, any further sharing he might have about how he has inspired others through this path of his. Um, but a few tips first for how we show up in ways to, to show, not just tell. And, you know, I think a basic important um, step that Dr. Tayer really embodied, which is starting with our own, our own self-care. If our own journey is not solid, it's going to be hard to inspire others. So, you know, the first step is that we become really solid in our own plant-based journey. And that can include, one, having good supports, um, connecting with other people who are vegan or whole food plant-based, especially if your family members are not yet on board. That becomes so important because it is challenging to live a lifestyle that isn't supported by people around you and, and you need a support system so that you can navigate the challenges and, and stay strong during difficult times and stay committed. So that's a really big one is finding local or online supports that will stand behind you on your, your vegan journey. Also, you know, you may want to invite your loved ones to be a support to you, even if they're not yet ready themselves to go fully plant-based just explaining to them why your journey to veganism or plant-based living is so important and asking, you know, will you at least stand behind me on this journey and be in, you know, a support for me because this is helping my health or this is helping my value system be fully lived. And also to, you know, stay educated, you know, keep reading, learning, you know, staying on top of 
research or whatever resources, things that help you to, to really stay committed on your path and live as healthy of a lifestyle as possible. If, if we're eating in ways, you know, there are plant-based foods that aren't so healthy and, you know, donuts can be plant-based. Um, <laughs> Oreos supposedly are vegan. Um, you know, if we're, if we're not eating healthy, we may not embody the lifestyle that we're really wanting to bring people towards. So even if our goal is really more the ethics or the environment, the healthier and more vibrant we are, you know, through meditation, healthy, nourishing plant foods, um, enough sleep, exercise, um, we're going to be more inspiring to others to want to have what we have and to have them ask us, hmm, how do you do this? How, you know, how does someone like Dr. Taher, after being a couch potato, as he described it, suddenly, you know, run a half marathon and then later marathons and climb mountains and do all those amazing things? Uh, and then I guess the final thing for being a good role model is really sharing delicious vegan plant-based food as often as possible. And again, the story of bringing people to a vegan restaurant really represents that. And when you go to gatherings, bringing delicious food that people will realize this is doable. This is so important um, that, that people realize it's not only doable, but it's delicious because that... That's the biggest thing is if we think it's not possible, it's hard to, to make the change. But if we start to see that it's, it is possible, that that's a first step and that it's not only possible, but it actually, for many of us, once we try the food and then try the lifestyle, we realize we'd never want to go back. I, I will add one more thing to that too, as being a role model is being compassionate to what we would call pre-vegans, um, pre pre-vegans, pre plant-based eaters, because, you know, most of us weren't born plant-based. Most of us had a journey. And often we can get impatient with people not being where we are in terms of their openness to this lifestyle. But being judgmental or angry doesn't really inspire change. So the more compassionate you can be to people in your life, that will be helpful in applying all the other tools and tips that are in the ebook. Um, on how to inspire others. I'll um, maybe comment on the documentary part later, but um, maybe we can give Dr. Taylor a chance to share anything that he wants to share about, you know, how has your lifestyle inspired your friends, your, you know, others in your life? See, uh, first of all, uh, we were 12 of us in Sedona. Two of them were hardcore meat eaters. Four of them were on a herbivore diet, you know, a omnivore diet, sorry, whereby they ate both meat as well as vegetarians. Six of them were vegetarians. And the two of us, my wife and I, were vegans. So as I said that we have planted the seed over there, let's see what happens. Number two, my immediate family. My wife, because people turn into vegans for three obvious reasons, which Angela has very clearly mentioned in the past talks, uh, for a health reason, for the climate reasons, or due to the animal rights. My daughter and my wife turned vegan 25 years back because of animal rights. I did not. I turned because of health reasons. My son still eats chicken. But what we do is, he has turned after reading my book and all that, he has now got a lot of veggies and fruits in his diet and very little of the meat. When he comes home and we have a family uh, eating period, we don't cook for him. We say, you cook your chicken. So at times he's, he's a doctor. So he comes around his hospital, is working on emergency rooms and all that. So when he comes, he doesn't have a time. He says, no, forget it. I'll eat what you all eat. So he's getting into it. And we are not giving him a, 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 you know, a plate full of chicken and say, go ahead. We are doing this for you. That makes it easier as well as harder, if you, if you know what I mean. So he's getting into it. So that's another reason. I thought this thing was my patience. I don't tell them that if you do plant-based, you're going to live long and you're not going to get diseases. I always tell them, this is what it is and try it out. 
If it is going to work for you, come back and let me know. If it does not work for you, we'll talk about it. So that way I've been able to change more people than just by lecturing them. So, and, and come on, let's, let's be, have nutrition. If nutrition is that important, and as, who said that? Maimonides said this, that, uh, that uh, no disease that can be treated by that should be treated by any other means. The philosopher. So if that is so important, the diet and nutrition, why are we not being taught in medical schools? I had zero hours. My son had 25 hours. There's something wrong in the system. So I can't keep on doing the conventional, the thing. Yes, it has a part. Conventional medicines, consequence of the disease has a part. I am not going to turn around somebody who has got acute appendicitis, go home and have a carrot stick. You know what I mean. <laughs> so that's my point. But we have to, chronic diseases is killing. Acute appendicitis, appendicitis is not killing people. Heart transplants we do, but not killing people. Chronic diseases. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, well, let's see if we have some questions from the audience. Yes. And for that, what I'd like to do is bring Dr. Sally Lipsky on uh, and uh, welcome Sally and uh, please. Uh, so uh, let, let me just say that <clears throat> Dr. Lipsky, Sally, uh, we're very fortunate to have her participate in our work here as we're uh, getting ready to compile and she's taking the lead on a compile a certification and training program so that we can all get even better at inspiring people we care about. So uh, Sally, please tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and uh, share some of the comments and questions that uh, people in the audience have had for us. Yes, thank you, Peter. This is wonderful. I, in my former career, was a professor of education. So, you know, I'm just very, excited and enthused to be working on certification and using Angela's wonderful book as sort of a starting point so that people as ambassadors can maybe get some more tools under their belt, looking at some ways to communicate. Somebody, you, we talked about Angela and those comments about compassion and how important that is. And that's also, we can look at how we approach each other from a sense of kindness and compassion. So looking at the questions, actually some of the questions, Dr. Tayar, was were answered about your family, about do you recommend it to um, your patients? And someone asked you when you were in the hospital, did they send feed you animal products? I'm okay, so which, let me answer the last question first. Uh, yes, they did. Because American, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Heart Association diet still, or the American Medical Association diet does not have a plant-based diet. So they have fat-free or low-fat dairy products. They have eggs in there, this thing, but only the white of the egg. So these things were still there. So... Having said that, yes, I had those. Because at that time, I was not really thinking of a plant-based. So I did eat, but it was not like the huge pieces of chicken and pork chops that I did when I was a resident and working in the hospitals. So, Some, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody wants to know if you're taking new patients in the Atlanta area. <laughs> I, I, I know I wish I would, but I'm doing telemedicine right now. And I tell them that if somebody has a question and they can't get hold of their own PMD, they're they are most welcome to call me and I will answer them. So I don't mind my phone being out in the open because if somebody really requires it and wants a bit of advice, and not having their primary doctor, I would be very happy. And are you based, Sally, in Pittsburgh? I am. 
Yes. Oh, my brother is over there in Pittsburgh. He's an author. He has written four or five books. Uh, yeah, Hussein Tahir Bhai. So uh, it, who knows? I may come to Pittsburgh and see you. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I may, Dr. Tehar, uh, Susan Francis, how, uh, how would she get a hold of you? She was She's the one asking if you're taking patients in Atlanta. I'm not taking any more patients. Right. It's because I have my practice in Alabama. So those are the patients that I do telemedicine. But my neighbors, my uh, around my circle, friends, all that, they have a phone that I'm very happy to give the number. And she can easily call me up and I can talk to her. Okay. So my number is 441-4140-256 is the area call. Okay. But the idea um, is that please tell anybody who wishes to, to write down a text first, because I don't pick up numbers that I don't know. So if absolutely. They give, they give me a text first and say I was in the We Did It Health, and I was one of the listeners, and I would like to talk to you. Can you? I will get back to that person. Beautiful. And Peter, put me uh, on your uh, payroll. Okay. <laughs> you got it. You, 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 we'll have you on, on our payroll. Yes, with, with the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so uh, Sally, do you see some other questions you'd like to share? I don't see, unless I'm not, I'm missing something. I think it, the questions were covered. Lots of people are saying, what an inspiring journey. What a great story. Thank you for sharing. Um, the appreciation is definitely present in the comment section. It's amazing, absolutely. We have yeah. we have people doing yoga right now and watching and and all kinds of things. Uh, but everybody's so inspired with your story, and thank you so very much for sharing it. Um, so, uh, thank you, tell me. So, what is uh, what what are some of your favorite favorite ways to talk to do you talk to patients about about being plant-based what are your favorite things to tell them well i i bring up the subject because if i have uh anybody with an acute problem i treat the acute problem if somebody's coming with asthma attack then i treat them with breathing uh, and all that um uh, but if somebody comes with chronic uh, problems like say heart disease or blood pressure diabetes cholesterol then I give them an option. Even if they want to continue with what the cardiologist or their gastroenterologist has given them in pill form, I will say, do what your doctor says, but there is no harm in changing into a plant-based diet. Then when your doctor sees that because you're plant-based and now your cholesterol has come down, oh my God, what did you do? So you're not only getting better, you're teaching your doctor. And so that he will reduce the medication and then eventually say, wait a minute, this works on this person and maybe I should try and use this in the other patients. So I never tell them to stop taking the medication. I tell right. them to continue with that and automatically you'll find out when your blood pressure is low, when you go for your next three-month visit, the doctor will say, wait a minute, Let's lower the dose. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm wondering, um, so m I've heard from so many people that, that their doctor just doesn't understand the power of food as medicine. How, what would you advise us all to do when we go see a doctor who's not plant-based? How, how can we, we inspire them? How can we get them curious about the power of, of a plant-based lifestyle? Is there anything we can tell a doctor who doesn't know about it? First of all, remember one thing. I believe very strongly that if a person has diabetes, he should know more about diabetes than the doctor. Because the doctor has to know a whole lot of things. But if you have got diabetes, if you've got blood pressure, you got to know about blood pressure more than your doctor. Your doctor can guide you. Number two, 50% of bypass surgeries and stents, stents done in this country and in my uh, birth country, India, are unnecessary. 
So you imagine the colossal waste of, of money. So here is my other talks that I do about understanding the coronary artery flow. And so they can understand that if you have got an angina, so I'm going to make a very strong statement over here. Had I known then what I know and understand today, I would not have had the stance for the bypass surgery. You, you, you can would... imagine how important it is for people to understand this. This is colossal. We are talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. Then you can do it by whole food plant-based. I'm not talking about acute heart attack. That's the right way to go. Call yeah. your, you should go to 911, go to emergency room, boom, boom, boom. They take your clot off, they put your stand and that fails bypass surgery. That's right. But not in angina. I told you my plaques are very thick. They have to shave it off. It's endothelium. And we have got 50 million, uh, 25,000 miles of arteries and veins running in our body. It's almost like the weight of the liver. Each artery has uh, an endothelium. I'm going to give a talk on the 13th about women and heart disease. Because that's a new thing. We always turned around and said that the widow maker is that left anterior descending when it gets blocked. No more. It's a widow maker as well as a widow war maker. Because heart disease is a leading cause of death in women too. But in 40% of the times, they're not caught. It's what is called the lentil, lentil syndrome. Yeah, the movie, uh, uh, it was it lentil by Barbara Streisand, her first movie. Uh, and that shows that unless you're a man, you'll be missed out because all the studies have been done by men, for men, in men. But the women, are 40% of the women have microvascular problems and not the coronary artery disease. So this is what I'm, I, because it's a women's month, health, I'm going to talk on this on the 13th of a broken heart syndrome and uh, heart disease in women. Doctor, That's somebody asked you, what are your favorite heart healthy foods? Do you have any favorites? You see, I believe that the whole food plant-based diet, as Dr. Collins and I talked a lot about it, he asked me that, you know, what do you think about it? He says that generally speaking, if you have a whole food plant-based diet, it has enough micronutrients and macronutrients to help not only in heart disease, but any chronic disease. They're all interrelated. So your micronutrients and ma macronutrients are all there in a plant-based diet. But I see, as you grow older, you're not very much into food. I mean, your taste buds are there. And what we have done, what I did in the past to appease my 50,000 cells in my uh, taste buds at the, at the expense of trillions of cells in my body. So that I am trying to say that I have very simple things. If you don't want to eat meat and you like meat, then take earthy things like jackfruit or mushrooms and make a hamburger with that with little spinach on top. Make a, uh, what you call uh, this uh, tofu scramble. And this is a true story again. Two years back, I invited my friends. Six of us met over there on New Year's Eve and they slept overnight at my place. And usually before that, we used to always make scrambled eggs and things like this. I said, I'll make you scrambled eggs. And I made them the scrambled tofu. I promise you, all of them said, wow, this is the best eggs we have, we have ever eaten. And then when I told them the truth, it, one of them said, oh, then it doesn't taste that good. So, <laughs> <laughs> you see, the, the thing is, so my point is that you can do these things, you know. I mean, imagine you can you can make soups with the seven beans and keep it up and then go on adding your things, your avocados. Your, I'm learning. I, I, I in, in my time, actually, I know that COVID has 
created a horrendous problem for people. But to me, it was blessing in disguise. I would have never written my book had I not got the time to put my thoughts on paper. I would have never started gardening, which I'm not too bad, but I'm not a good cook. <laughs> That's why my I have a wife. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what I'm trying to say is, of course, she takes me to task each time I <laughs> she tells me, you cook and nobody, both of us don't eat because I'm not a good cook. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what a lovely, what a lovely talk. What nice people. Angela, you said you are an introvert. I don't think so. <laughs> you express yourself so very well. And uh, I'm so happy that to know you. Oh. And you too, Sally. Thank Who knows, you. I may come and talk to those Indian doctors in Pittsburgh. There's some whole food plant-based ones. Yeah. See, we are not, we are not preaching to the choir. Yeah. They know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm aware of time, but we did promise to say a word about documentary. So I'll just say very briefly on that. Um, you know, it's not always easy to just show someone a documentary. Obviously, if they don't want to see it, you're not going to like force it on them. But I will just add that if someone is open to watching a documentary, that often leads to change that our words alone can't do. You know, because stories like Dr. Taher's are, in, are shown in these documentaries, that visual imagery and the message and the, the experts and the life changes and transformation that are shown in documentaries often just lead to someone being open in a way that our words wouldn't create. And I can be aware of that, you know, with people I've known in my own life, that things like the game changers, what the health, forks over knives, um, and even for sort of a fun movie, Vegucated, you know, that shows, you know, people in New York City trying a plant-based vegan diet and really learning all the reasons for it. And it, it shows it in a fun way. So just kind of keeping that in mind when there's that opportunity to share a documentary with somebody, especially if they are going through a health issue um, or if they're interested in the climate, conspiracy, you know, those things can often create a lot of change for people. So we just hold that. That's a whole separate topic in the book because it is often so compelling. So I'll just end there. And just one last thing, if people are interested, whoever it is, uh, if they're interested in knowing women's uh, heart disease and what are the differences in men and women, please feel free to join. It is, I think, on the 13th. I will be putting it out on. Yes, let's, let's post that on our Facebook page. And also, if you would, Dr. Taher, uh, somebody was asking for your scrambled tofu recipe. So maybe we can post that also. Tell, tell, him, tell him or her it'll cost about $35. $35 for yeah. your recipe? Okay. Yeah. There and, is uh, one final question about medical gaslighting relating to women's health. I I would do we have time to talk about this? Sure, please. Go ahead. I know about medical gaslighting. It just came out on uh, the TV, and it is the same thing as a lentil syndrome, where women are missed because they are not taken seriously for several reasons, because they don't have the kind of a heart attack that men have. Mm -hmm. So they may come around with neck pain, throat pain, shoulder pain for long periods of time, very fatigued. And they're told in the ER, go, you must be having some regurgitation and take some antacids or what, what have you. Now, the surprising thing is that the moment they, when they go alone, they are asked to go home. The moment they take the husbands or the better halves or the birth halves, whatever, there, then they're treated in a different way. This is a lentil syndrome. It's a, it's a lovely movie. I wish everybody could see it. Barbara Streisand played a role in which she had to dress up like a man to go into a school because they would not accept her. And so what, what they say is that unless and until you behave like a man, 
you are like a man, you will be not taken seriously. It's definitely something we want to change in our culture, for sure. Of course, yeah. of course. absolutely. I'm, I'm all for women's rights. Absolutely. Yeah. In the comments, Patty wishes that you would create a whole food plant-based clinic in your area. <laughs> oh. uh, any anybody who is going to sponsor that? <laughs> <laughs> well, she might have resources. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. but I am in many many groups in uh, Atlanta too. Uh, that there is a lovely lady, uh, uh, Shobha Swami who is doing this whole food plant-based and I somehow get into the group and give my medical this thing. So she's doing it a very, very good job. Beautiful. Thank well, you so, so very much, all of you. you... Yeah, well, thank you for being and here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate you and namaste. Um, you know, and I'd like to share, I, I've been sharing this, I've, I've learned this from uh, Dr. Rao's uh, climate healer, somebody in that movement. Uh, so many people have said we need a secret vegan handshake. And so I was showing this, uh, namaste vegan. Correct, correct. And so I, I got to do this too. Right? Namaste vegan, yes, yes. Well, uh, thank you so very much, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you uh, on our on our final, on our fourth event, uh, which will be on the second Saturday of May, which will be uh, Saturday the 14th. And uh, hope you can all join us. And we'd love to have everybody watch for our, our live uh, summit that will be on June 23rd. It will be live in Cleveland with the National Health Association's annual conference the day before their conference. Uh, we're going to have Angela with us and, and some other very special guests. Dr. Salis Rao will be with us. Linda Middlesworth will be with us. And also another psychologist, uh, Marla Friedman, will be with us. So really appreciate everybody being here and look forward to, to our next uh, live session. And um, please encourage everybody you know to join us on the scoreboard we you know million healthy life scoreboard and our mission is to show the world that uh being plant-based and having plant-based health and compassion for animals the power of reversing climate change so please ask everybody you know who's plant-based to join us on the survey it's it, as you know you've probably done it it's it takes less than a minute to answer just the one simple question and with that, I'd love to thank everybody here, uh, everybody who's watching, and Dr. Teher and uh, Angela and Sally for helping us out and look forward to next time. So thank you, everybody. Namaste and look forward to next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.